the world is progressing rapidly. If you have a handheld device, now you can look through, peep through a hole and see the whole world and beyond. Fast runs the technology. London is now always available on free wireless high fidelity network. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis is a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. China warns US on Asia military strategy. Syria unrest, 10 dead in Damascus blast, says State TV. Turkey Ergen Khan plot, ex-army head Ilkar Basburg held. Europe's biggest free Wi-Fi zone set for London. PIP breast implant bows dismiss women's concerns. Anuj Bidwe is shooting parents visit Salford scene. And now the news in detail. China warns U.S. on Asia military strategy. China state media have warned the U.S. against flexing its muscles after Washington unveiled a defense review switching focus to Asia Pacific. In an editorial, official news agency Xinhua said, President Barack Obama's move to increase U.S. presence in the region could come as a welcome boost to stability and prosperity. But it said any U.S. militarism could create ill will and endanger peace. Mr. Obama also plans dollars $450 billion in cuts to create leaner military. Thousands of troops are expected to be axed over the next decade under the far-reaching defense review. The defense budget could also lose another dollars $500 billion at the end of this year after Congress failed to agree on deficit reduction following a debt ceiling deal in August 2011. Mr. Obama said tide of war was receding in Afghanistan and that the U.S. must renew its economic power. Regional disputes, however, he told reporters at the Pentagon, will be strengthening our presence in the Asia-Pacific and budget reductions will not come at the expense of this critical region. Xinhua said the U.S. role could be good for China in helping to secure the peaceful environment it needed to continue its economic development. But it added, while boosting its military presence in the Asia-Pacific, the United States should abstain from flexing its muscles as this won't help solve regional disputes. If the United States indiscreetly applies militarism in the region, it will be like a bull in a China shop and endanger peace instead of enhancing regional stability. BBC Asia analyst Charles Scanlon said the U.S. decision to focus on Asia would have come as no surprise to China's leaders. However, to some in Beijing, it would look like a containment strategy designed to curtail China's growing power. Beijing officials have yet to comment. Our agenda today, embodied in the documents that we have just released, reflects the breadth and depth of our alliance. We are cooperating more closely on a wider range of issues and challenges than ever before. Syria unrest, 10 dead in Damascus blast, says State TV. At least 10 people have died in a suicide attack on a district in central Damascus, Syrian state media say. State TV showed pictures of blood spattered streets on Midan district following the attack, which it blamed on terrorists. Two weeks ago, 44 people died in a similar blast. The authorities also blamed on terrorists. Opposition activists accused the government of staging them. Arab League monitors are in Syria on a month-long observer mission. 
They are trying to ensure compliance with a peace plan, but activists say the Syrian government crackdown has continued with scores of people killed. A resident of Midan, the scene of reported anti-government protests in recent weeks, told Reuters news agency that ambulances were in the area. Most foreign correspondents have been barred from reporting within Syria itself. Immediate information indicates that a suicide terrorist blew himself up at a traffic light in the Midan neighborhood. Reuters news agency quoted state television as saying, According to state TV, at least 10 people are confirmed dead, with authorities fearing the toll could rise to 25. State news agency Sana said 46 had been injured. Authorities say most of those killed were civilians, but some security personnel were among the casualties. TV pictures showed the shattered, blood-spattered windows of what appeared to be a bus-carrying policeman. A spokesman from the opposition Syrian Revolution General Commission, SRGC, inside Syria told reporters they had nothing to do with the explosion. He blamed Syrian security forces for the blast, adding, the regime is sacrificing innocent people to misguide the world and create this picture that they are fighting terrorists. He feared there will be more explosions in the future. Turkey Ergenekon plot ex-army head Ilkar Basburg held. A former head of the Turkish armed forces has been remanded in custody to face charges over an alleged plot to overthrow the government. General Ilkar Basbog, who retired in 2010, is the highest ranking officer to be caught up in a widening probe into the so called Ergenekon network. Prosecutors say in 2003, the hardline nationalist group tried to bring down Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan's government. General Basbuk rejects the allegations. Some 400 suspects are already on trial. We can say it's a really tragic comic to accuse somebody who commands such an army of forming and directing a terrorist group. Turkey's NTV network quoted General Basbuk as telling prosecutors. The Ergenekon trial is one of the several involving accusations of anti-government plots by military and secular establishment. Some military officers already charged in the case have said they acted in chain of command. Turkey's military, the second largest in the NATO alliance after the U.S., has long seen itself as a guarantor of country's secular constitution. It staged three coups in 1960 and 1980. But it has a history of tension with Mr. Erdogan's governing AK party, with the two sides engaged in a war of words for the past two and a half years over the alleged pose. Critics have complained that the Ergenekon investigation has focused on opponents of the Islamist-rooted AK. The government denies any such motives. The AK is considered a successor to the Welfare Party, an Islamist party which led a 1996-97 government forced to resign by an army-led campaign. Gang leadership, the former army chief, was taken to Istanbul's Silvery Prison early on Friday morning after a health check. Turkish state-run media said it is the first time a former army chief has been referred to a court as a suspect. General Basbu could face charges of gang leadership and attempting to topple the government. Correspondents say the general was more sympathetic to the governing party than his predecessors. Europe's biggest free Wi-Fi zone set for London. Mobile operator O2 is to provide free internet to millions of residents and visitors in central London by launching Europe's largest free Wi-Fi zone. The service will be rolled out across the boroughs of Westminster and Kensington and Chelsea in 2012. It will be powered by a system installed on street furniture. 
O2 said the deal, which will have no cost to the taxpayer, will enable visitors to make the most of what London has to offer. Councillor Philippa Rowe, cabinet member for strategic finance at Westminster City Council said, Westminster welcomes over a million tourists every day, is home to two and a half lakh residents, employs over half a million people and sees 4,000 business charts up each year. Visitors to London will easily be able to share their pictures and updates on the Olympic events across social networking sites. O2 will begin installing the Metro Wireless Network across Westminster this month, initially being available in limited areas before being rolled out across both boroughs. High quality connectivity London is catching up with other major cities of the world. In Paris, several hundred individual Wi-Fi zones offer free connections in public parks and municipal spaces. New York also offers free Wi-Fi in parks and last year began to install wireless internet access at several of its subway stations. London service will be powered by equipment attached to lampposts and other existing structures on London streets and should be completed by March. This groundbreaking deal will see us deliver high-quality connectivity across London in time for London 2012, said Derek McManus, Chief Operating Officer of O2.